guys. So Colin is on the Palax again today. Um, I've got to go and get some more cages because we are very nearly out. Uh, I was going to go on the factory today and we may do a little bit later, but um, yeah, we're running out of cages fast and there's no point setting up the factory and then instantly running out of cages a couple of hours later. So we've found some more small stuff for Colin to go through and uh, I'm going to get the Eiffel Williams trailer on the D-Max and we're going to get two or three loads of going to go and get two or three loads of IBCs from the second depot. Making stacks. This is all we've got left. Just these here. Then wooden ones we're leaving for kindling nets and stuff. There is a couple in here that could probably get pulled out. Go over and see Colin in a minute. I'm using my new Osmo 3, so let me know what you think of the camera quality and how smooth it is. I'm also using the mic. The kiln is still pumping away. It smells lovely in here. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be all ready for tomorrow, so I'll just keep it, keep it going. It's. Uh, Looking really nice. Another 24 hours. She should be ready. I do have to put some big stuff in before I go out. We're well up to 120. Hopefully you can hear me all right. So, yeah, we're right up, which is nice. Really gonna have to get this cleaner back inside now, guys. We seem to have rain every other day and I accidentally left a few, quite a few. I'll show you. I left a few uh, kiln dried logs on the cleaner last night, which are now gonna be wet. So they'll just have to go in the cage and get re-dried, which is a bit annoying. It's not loads, but still annoying nonetheless. So yeah, we need to get the mince this inside again, have a bit of a clear out. We've got quite a bit of room. I'm gonna have a restack of this kindling. Uh, my mum makes all this, which is really nice. She's done a grand job. Best kindling in the southeast, that is. Look how neat that is. Um, yeah. Get that stacked up. This is the oldest stuff, we're using that now. We are getting through the kidney next pretty quick. It's not the nicest of timber. I have to apologize to uh, Colin <laughs> this morning. Uh, but it all makes logs. It takes a little bit more time, but it all makes logs. Um, like I said, I'm gonna go and grab Grab the Max. I'll go and get some more cages, and then we'll probably be on some of this bigger stuff this afternoon. There's a lot of it. Some of this is going to be too big. It's a shame. You know, these three or four bits there are going to be too big. Oh, I hope we get something to come and process all this stuff. A bit of six way stuff there for the paddocks though. That makes logs pretty quick. So then guys, um, yeah, let me know what you think of the Osmo and the mic. Hopefully it's a bit better. You can hear me a bit clearer. Um, just trying to always improve on the quality of my videos, um, but also how often they come out. Uh, like I said before, in my previous videos, or one of my previous videos, it wasn't my fault that I couldn't get a video out. The 
the iPad had a funky time. So, there we go. I'm gonna try and use the drone a bit more again. And with this big job, what's happening with Aztec, I'm sure they're, well, they're gonna be filming it all anyway. But I'm really keen to bring you the whole journey from walking through the woodland and uh, seeing the timber standing, the tracks, them harvesting it. And then we're gonna be moving a lot down with the Unimog and the new Grizzly trailer, so that's gonna be quite nice. And uh, we'll be unloading it here with the digger. So, yeah, all a bit different. Let's see what that looks like. Pretty bloody good. Just gotta lift it up a bit and come back another couple of inches. Oh, I might even be able to do it. Yeah, I'm able to do that. Let me put this camera down. Try and get it in here without smashing anything. Logs being made. It's all go, it's all go. I do definitely need to get a little tripod for this thing. Oh, nothing in that at all. Right, we're on the road, just heading up to the second depot. Like I keep saying, there's about 90 cages up there. I believe that was what we had been last. I haven't taken anything from there yet, but now we're getting full up. I didn't want to double handle everything. Get it back to mine straight away, and then we're always moving them around the yard because we're running out of space or whatever. Now we're stacking four high, we've got a bit of space. We'll start bringing them back. Uh, and then eventually we'll have um, about 200, 220 uh, IBCs that are available, uh, actually fill up with green. That's not including 30 in the kiln and God knows how many that are being used for kindling bags as well as burner fuel and kindling blocks. Um, we've probably got probably another 60 held up there in other things like that. So in total we've probably got about 260 to 280 uh, cages. I'd really like to keep pushing forward and uh, first kind of milestone would be 500 cages, that'd be nice. Um, my main goal is to have a thousand cages full at any one time, but it might take a couple of years, uh, but I think we've got the hard standing for it now, so we don't have to put any more of that down, we can just invest in timber and cages. I have spoke to my IBC man and he's he hasn't got any at the moment, but he now knows that I want them and he will be in touch when he's got another load. The thing is, he doesn't he doesn't do it purely for IBCs. He he uh, he he basically deals in straw and hay and other things like that. But the IBCs is just a little plus. 
and the advantage being is he brings down a load of IBCs from up north because uh, that's typically where they all seem to be up up north a bit anyway I can then backload him because I've got contacts in the farming industry I can then backload him with straw and he takes straw back up north so it works out really well for him um, so yeah fingers crossed we'll have another no load of 90 and I'm going to try and get him straight into mine rather than uh, get it dropped off the second depot I uh, I don't know I might have to do a recce and do do a trip and see how low the trees are because he is very high when he's got three high on a lorry uh, we'll, we will see anyway um, yeah Oh well, uh, Thursday's off to a good start. I was up to 12 o'clock last night editing the, uh, I believe it's video 128 or 129. Um, the Palax C750 video. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. There is a lot of exciting things coming to the channel. I am really just motivated really for this, this winter coming. Um, sales are looking good. Timber's coming in. Uh, doesn't seem to be any problem with timber at the minute. It's just, I'm just reinvesting all my money into timber at the moment. Um, I think it's better than money in the bank, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, working out cash flow is, is a job in itself. And I've kind of self-taught, you know, myself, running a business that I think I'm pretty good at cash flow if I'm honest um, it gets a bit tight during the summer and I could probably be better with saving more in the new year rather than investing it uh, it's just hard uh, but actually day to day cash flow as well as um, you know managing finances I think I'm, I'm pretty good especially being self taught I've only been at it for six years now, so. A um, little bit of an insight there to the old business. But we're nearly there now, so I'll stop rambling on. And I've actually got the other DGI Action 4, is it? Uh, so I can stick it on the boom of the telehandler and try and get some good shots because this thing is great for handheld, but I do need a little tripod for it, I think, because I can't put it down anywhere. Yeah, let me know what you think about the Osmo. I keep on going on about it, but I'm pretty impressed with it. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your feedback, as well as the mic, is it any clearer? I need to try and learn to speak a bit clearer, because I slur my words quite a lot. Another thing that is coming in the post um, I have a goodie box from the Bunyan show, I believe. Uh, Martin from Fuelwood went out there, really enjoyed his time at the Bunyan show. Um, Fuelwood stuff seems to be taking off very quickly over there. They're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel with the small wood. Um, I think Dan from Back 40 Firewood has set a bit of a craze there. Um, but yeah. I'm interested to see what's in the goodie box. God knows what's going to be in there. Uh,
There we go guys, a few taken from the stack. Just got 18 on. Um, I was debating whether to bring the grafter, but you're not actually gonna get many more on. You only get two more on. And this is a dance I'm more comfortable. <laughs> As you can see, second depot is looking rather bare. We've, uh, well, I've started to eat into this already. Uh, I'll have a look on the website and see how many we've actually used up, but I'm pretty sure up to the kind of 250 mark, uh, 250 to 300 mark. And like I said, we had 750 up here and uh, 50 odd back at main base and they're literally gone as well, so. Yeah, it's a bit scary, but we are nearly at the beginning of November, so I think we'll be okay. I'm going to do a little promotion over Halloween, hoping that will just increase some sales a little bit more, a little bit more of a cash injection, keep things moving. We had quite a big influx in August when I sent the um, my little price increase reminder out. September was pretty busy because we had a cold snap. And then October so far, it's brimmed pretty steady, but October typically, like historically, is my biggest month. And it currently is about the same as September. So I would like to give it a little G up. Jet washing off the harvester before it goes off to a new site. Right guys, well, as you can probably tell, the Palax is still running. We had a bit of a change of plan. I went and got um, the load of cages, and then we had lunch, and we just thought, we've only got about four hours left of the day, we've still got some small timber. While it's set up, let's just carry on with the Palax. I've had to do some uh, booking in, and I've done, also done a bit more editing. Um, so we've all had jobs to do, and we just thought, while it's set up, let's just carry on. Um, I will change over the timber deck onto the factory over the weekend on my own. Uh, I just thought, while Colin's here, let's just be productive and keep the Palax going. So, yeah, done really well. Still cracking away. It's four o'clock now, we've still got an hour. Probably uh, start packing up about quarter to five, have a bit of a sweep up. But, um, I think what he's done today. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's number twelve, so might get fifteen, sixteen done. Um, the timber isn't the nicest, I have to admit. Uh, it's quite bendy. Some of it's quite big, but it's very bendy, so it's hard work, a lot of cutting, a lot of manhandling. Uh, but they still make logs at the end of the day, so we've got to keep processing it. Um, we have a lot, and I mean a lot, of uh, factory stuff that is going to be perfect for next week. So, looking forward to that. I might sharpen a few chains, just going to keep an eye on the burner, um, keep that pumping out. These logs should be done tomorrow morning. So. Colin's going to have a big day packing logs into bulk bags over the cleaner and uh, we've also got some stacking jobs and I've got a lot of deliveries to do as well. So. Keep bringing down this humidity. Burner's at 118, 120 so it's pretty maxed out. Go and show you my pile of oversized. So I've had quite a bit of a sort out over there. I've pulled all the small stuff out for Colin and we have left with the factory stuff, which we'll go ahead and process as I say next week. 
and I have extended the oversized pile. Um, some of it, you know, like that there, dead straight, probably close to 55, 60 centimetres, well, 55 centimetres. Um, it's a big old log, that. Um, some of it even bigger, I mean, did put this bit down earlier. Probably won't get him a shot. That is, I don't know, that's gonna be 70, 80 centimetres. That is a bit of a flare, but it's a big old bit of wood. So yeah, the oversized pile's growing. It's quite nice. Um, bit of security, really. Uh, I mean, you're not gonna drive out in that field now. It's far too wet, but bit of security, bit of a windbreak from the yard here. Um, just kind of forms that wall along the wood yard. It's quite nice. All this stuff here on the left, that's factory all graded. All of this is factory. All that's factory. All the part behind is factory. I'm trying to think what we would have here. That's probably 15 ton. It's probably 30 ton maybe, 35 ton in that pile there. All that there, it's probably about 20 ton maybe. Mm. Maybe not. 15 ton, something like that. Uh, and then we've probably got about 30 ton here as well. So quite a bit to go out next week. I quite enjoy sorting through inventory actually, grading it out, seeing what we've got. We've also got a bit more of a pile here, pulled out this load. Now with this alder now, I'm actually going to keep it aside and cut it for kindling. Not a lot of waste, um, sometimes some sawdust gets wet and some waste is too small for the burner. Um, this is what we've made especially that pile there and whatever kind of slop comes off of the the track I scrape up um, that's what we've made in six years and what we'll do is let it rot down into like a compost and um, and we'll and we'll then spread it on the fields back into the ground so no waste here most most of the offcuts and whatever else goes straight through the burner as you know free heat for the kiln so I've got to carry on editing which a little update and kind of finish off this video so that is probably going to be it for today guys uh, just a bit of a catch up around the yard what's going on what kind of stock we've got in the yard at the moment lots to do next week and I'll keep videoing as much as I can thanks again for watching if you did like this kind of content don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button it really does help the algorithm I'll see you guys in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.